I was, I was gonna ask you about that. Like when you first started, did you know that you would have like this much impact on the game, this much, you know what I mean? Like you nah. rewrote history when you came out, you know what I'm saying? Like, Word up. It, and still nah. here, doing it. Uh, really, you know, I hope, I hope that people, you know, would, would, would like my work, you know, as you start and you just, you know, you're trying to get your foot in the door. You're trying to, you know, spark that pen and say the right thing, you know, attract that crowd, man. But, you know, I had no idea, you know. No idea. 30 something years ago, I had no idea I'd be, you know, sitting here in 2020 with the accolades that I have. When, when they didn't want to let you on the mic in the park. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know that, that caused a problem, man. That caused <laughs> a problem, up. That caused a problem. You know how that is, when you don't let a kid do something, man. You know, the kid want to do that more and more. Word up. Yo, welcome to this edition of Crook's Corner. What can I really say about this man? Um, words don't do this man justice. He's a legend. The GOAT on many people's lists gave us classic after classic, um, mastered the supreme art of lyricism. It's just too many things that I can say about this man right here. Thank you for coming to the show. Rock no doubt, my brother. Building. Thanks for the welcome, man, baby. Man. Well, uh, appreciate it. Well, uh, I got a lot of questions for you, man, but the first question, uh, How's life? Pretty good, man. Enjoying, man. Um, you know, um, to to know that I'll be in this spot years ago, you know, at peace, you know, family's good, you know, doing good with my career. Um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have counted on it, man, but I feel good to be here, bro. Hey, man, in your book, Sweat the Technique, you said you tune out to tune in. Yes, sir. Can you give us a little peek into, like, your process of creating? Um, the first thing I like to do, I like to be comfortable. You know what I mean? I got, I got a little studio in the crib. Um, now, it's actually, I'm building a studio outside the crib, in the yard, though. Uh, but I like to be comfortable, man, and um, get in my zone. I like the track to tell me what to do, so I like to tune everything out. Right. You know what I mean? Almost sit there and become numb to, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, uh, a vehicle, you know what I mean? I like to attract to tell me what kind of style to use, what, what mood, um, what kind of energy, you know what I mean, the whole thing. Growing up on jazz music as a kid, that's one of the things that I realized that a lot of jazz music that didn't have vocals still made you feel a way, you know what I mean? Still gave you a feeling, still, you know, put a mood on, on, on the, on the situation, you know what I mean? So knowing that, I always try to look to see what the record was actually calling for, trying to tell me to do or, or what the what the energy was or the mood. And um, once I figure that out, then I just take it from there. Uh, I like how you put it in the book. You was talking about how the blank walls, yeah, you know, four yeah. walls. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I used to, being an artist, man, like I, like a view like this right here, man. You know, I would like to sit here and, and write rhymes. I like views in New York City, you know what I mean? Just, you know, the view. For some reason, I can look at the, the skyline and imagine what's going on. And to me, that feeds the, the psyche, man, and, and, and kind of just gives me information. Sometimes I don't have that view, you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, um, I was living in Connecticut you know what I mean? So, you know, you figure you're sitting in Connecticut, how could I get that New York vibe? Right. You know what I mean? And my way was to, no matter where I was, to make the wall or the room what I wanted it to be. You yeah. know what I mean? Enjoy that so I just try to make my environment, you know, what I want. But at the same time, it could be the, you know, female or, you know, it could be a bum in the street. And you wonder, like, you know, what's his story? Right. And to me, that's full, you know, full to my creativity, man. So, you know, just seeing things is one thing, but being able to see things is another thing. Mm. Wow. You, you rhyme complex from the gate. Um, the book also mentions how you said that you, your listeners, and the culture deserve and expect um, more than simplicity. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, why you feel that way? Especially at this time. Uh, rap's been here for a long time. Um, you know, we should be at a point now where we have the craft, you know, somewhat mastered and we're, you know, pushing the envelope, man, and doing new things and, and showing, you know, what it is or, or what the art of the MC is. And, um, you know, some places it's young right now, you know what I mean? In the Bronx, it was young. I always say, you know, when hip hop started in the Bronx, it was hip hop, the hip hip, the hip hip, hip. You know, think of that today, it's like, Fuck was we, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Hip hop, the hibbit, the hibbit, the hibbit, the hibbit, you know what I mean? But, you know, it was young then, and it's, it's young in a lot of places now, man. So, you know, I, I accept and respect that the genre is growing, uh -huh. and we just have to be a little patient, man, you know, and hope that it matures in some of them young places, man. And, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll, the creative uh, concepts or the creative uh, content will be a little. Uh, suitable for, you know, what we trying to make hip hop right now. Cause weak ideas irritate my ears, man. You know what I mean. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You know what oh, I mean? Can't help it, man. Can't <laughs> help it. Hold up. I got into the book. The book is, is dope. It's a lot of gems. It's a lot Thank of jewels you. in there. You know what I mean? Especially for writers. You know what I mean? Um, in the book, you mentioned that you made a beat and rhymed over it for 60 minutes on a cassette tape. Yeah. Does that tape still exist? I hope so. Somebody got it, man. People used to steal my tapes all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know somebody out there got it. Like back in the day, um, cassette tapes, um, you would get sometimes a 60 minute tape or 30 minutes on each side. A friend of mine, I used to go to his house all the time, actually a friend of my older brother, Stevie Blast, brother Maniac, he's in a book as well. I used to go to his house and like, yo, my, my brother, I need this, man, I need this. So he'll, you know, make me a beat. I tell him, you know, you know, do this bass line, make the beat like this, he'll program it. I was, you know, a young cat. But um, yeah, man, and, and 30 minutes on a cassette was like, back then wasn't enough time. Right. That was, <laughs> So, you know, 30 minutes on one side, 30 minutes on the other side. So, you know, you get to a point and you, you set it up. Say, yo, when it gets to this point, give me a heads up. I'm going to stop the verse or something. You flip the tape over. This is, you know what I mean? Flip the tape over so nobody missing it. I ain't want nobody to miss one word. Mm. Flip the tape over, give me a thumbs up, and I'll start the rhyme again. But, um, yeah, man, like that was just, you know, like for the, for the library, you know, uh, MC had at the time. You know, rhyming for an hour seemed like, again, not enough time. You always say, oh man, I could have said, oh, I forgot to say. So, you know, but yeah, that was, that was like, you know, one of my things, man, to make a cassette and to be able to walk around and play it, you know, if it's in the car or somebody's box at the park. The box is, you know, uh, music that we used to, yeah. the boom boxes, the boom you know what I mean, box. for the young cats out there, man. But yeah, man, if it was somebody's box, car system, at the crib, anywhere, to have a tape with yourself on it was golden mm. back then. Just right. like being able to go to the studio now is the same feeling you get when you're able to just record yourself and hear yourself and then put it in the system and play it loud, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, it was it was big. Hold yeah, up. man, them tapes, them tapes got to be worth this house right now. You know what I'm <laughs> I hope, I hope so, man. You, I got that tape out there. Hold you up. know what I'm saying? And it's a couple. <laughs> uh, I know my man Biz Marquis. He got a bunch of tapes from back in the day. He Ooh. used to be in Long Island, and my man Biz got the Ellis collection from records to CDs to you know cassette tapes that. You know, we was recording back in the day, man, early 80s. Mm. And Biz, he got he got tapes of me rhyming at my high school, man. What? Where was born? Biz, like, yo, big up to Biz Mark. Big up to Biz you know Mark, man. Yeah, man. He, I need he's, to go sit with Biz. I need to hear a, this. Yeah, he's a, uh, he's a true hip-hop head, man. And brothers like that, man, I, I respect because he values hip-hop the mm -hmm. way everybody should. You know what I mean? Right. Myself included, so big right. up. Yo, man, Marley Maul synthesized it. I memorized it. Yes, sir. Eric B made a cut and, and advertised it. You know what I'm saying? My sir. melody. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Sir. Yo, that joint was five verses. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I mean, man. Like, 
it wasn't enough time on a song to say what you want to say. I know me, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I like, you know, if you listen to some of the verses still, some of the some of the verses was like 24 bars. Right. You know what I mean? Now it's just 16 bars, 16 bars. You're lucky if you get a third verse. Yeah. But back then, man, it was 24 bars the first verse, uh, 20 bars the second verse, 30 bars the third verse. Like, it was no format. Right. You know what I mean? And you just wrote to, you know, you, you got your point across. And that was my problem. I could never fully get my point across. You know what I mean? Just, but, uh, what well, up, man? It, it it was it was dope, man. But um, you know, years later, the format changed. Uh, you know, sixteen bars of rhyming, four to eight bars of right. hook. Sixteen bars, four to eight bars hook. You might have a a B uh, a B hook in there. Some yeah. some songs, but you know that became the format, man. But back then, it was just just spitting. You know, and and some of my songs didn't have hooks. Right. I mean, just straight, you know. Gas. Word. <laughs> straight up. <you> know? <laughs> what you yeah. uh, what you think about the current format of songs? You know what I'm saying? Um, it's 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 dope because now we have you know a little structure. You know, like like hip hop grown in so many aspects, man. And you know, in the beginning, there there was no manual, and there was no um, you know format. But you know. It grew, and we learned how to make songs. In the beginning, it was a little, little, little hard for me, man, because to make, you know, a, a, a verse with 16 bars, it's like I get to the 14th bar, and I got like eight more bars to explain what I just said right. in the previous bar. So right. I used to get a little caught up. So I used to have to put dots on the paper. I, I mentioned that in the book, so I know how much. How many bars I had left before I can make my point? Like I'll get to the eighth bar or the tenth bar and be like, all right, start making your point now, because you got, you know what I mean? Right. A couple more bars to go. But or in the beginning. Or like you said, explaining what all that was. Indeed. So you know previously. What I'm yeah, you know what I mean? You got like real thought provoking lyrics, you know, always have. Um Thank you, my brother. Um, I think I read that in the book too. Why why was it and is it important for you to make your listeners think? You know what I'm saying? Um, I think we was talking the other day, man, and my pops, my pops used to do it to me, you know what I mean? And, you know, subconsciously, it was like my pops would tell me one time, you know, long story short, ice cream truck was up and down the block all day. I got about 10, about 10 kids with me. I run to my pops, your pops, I get some money for the ice cream truck. So he look at me, I ain't even thinking I got 10 kids, you know what I mean? Dad, he look at me a little sideways, digging his pocket, hit me with some paper. Ice cream truck come back down the street about two hours later. Your pop guys, about 12, 15 kids with me now. He look, hand me some paper. Later on, I wanted to go to the, the deli. About this, you know, I got about five kids with me at this time. Yo, Dad, I remember this like yesterday, man. I might have been seven years old. So he looked at me this time, man, like, he pulled some money out and said, here, squeeze the green off it. So I grabbed it. I remember balling it up in my right hand, man, and jogging to the store. Me and my friends ran to the store. Spent all of it. When I had kids, same thing, man. You know, ice cream truck up and down the block all day. My kid, he pop a little kid on the block. He got 12, 15 kids running with him. Yo, dad, yo, dad. Ice cream, all right, boom, him and all his friends. About three, four times. Now, my pops told me to squeeze the green off it. I thought he meant don't lose it. Right. Put, you know, put it in your hand and, you know, don't get robbed on the way to the store and don't lose it. Squeeze the green off it. Hold it tight. Until my son did the same thing to me. And I hit him with the money and said, squeeze the green off it. And that didn't mean don't lose it. That meant don't spend it all. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But that's how my pops did me. He hit me, he used to always tell me little phrases and little, you know, sayings, and I would have to sit there and try to figure it out. He wouldn't give it to me. And I never asked him for it. You mm. know what I mean? So I think coming up like that, you know, like anything else, when you taught a certain way, sometimes you believe that that's the way to teach. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think subconsciously, man, it became my way of 
speaking to other people, like my pops did it to me, you're gonna get it too. I ain't gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give you some of it and let you do research or give you something that provokes you to make you wanna read something or follow up Absolutely. on something or take it deeper, you know what I mean? But yeah, man, it, it, it was, uh, you know, thinking back, man, it was, it was uh, dope coming up in, you know, that environment, man, because he always made me think, always made me think. That's dope because listening to your music when I was young, I had to go do research sometime. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's you sent me to the books. All right, go, go, go. That's what I was trying to do. That's what I was trying to do. No but. doubt. You know what mm. I mean? And I, I, I think that, you know, a lot of these young artists could really use that that type of jewel. You know what I mean? Send, send some of these kids to the books, man. You know, send them yes, to sir. Google. Yes, sir. You know uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's, that's what's dope now, too, man. Kids got everything at their fingertips, man. Right. And like you said, you had to go to the library. I had mm -hmm. to go to the library too and research a lot of the things that I was, you know, reading at the time. Kids can punch it up right on their phone, man, and it's incredible, man. So hopefully a lot of kids out there, man, is using the internet right because it's so informal to the ones that's asking the, the right questions, man. So understand that, man, you know. Um, Sometimes some of the older heads, you know, they get a little mad, like, you know, like we were saying, we, you know, I had to go to the library, man, I had to go through books, I had to get this book, that book, and that book just to answer one question, I had to do this and that. But um, it don't matter, man, long as they inquire, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Long as they interested, long as they, you know, and, and you know, that's good with me, man, because I, I love the fact that I could pull my phone out and hit a button and ask almost any question in the world yeah. and get an answer or at least get something where I can evaluate the answers. You know, modern technology, man, and kids, you know, understand you got something at your fingertips and using it the right way is is uh, key. Yeah, man. Because, I mean, if, if it, these kids are anything like we were, you know, hip-hop taught us a lot. You yes, know what sir. I'm saying? Yes, sir. Some things that the classroom didn't cover. That's right. You know that's what I mean? right, too. So it, that, that's very, very, very important, man. Um, that's right. Get your parents to work out there. Um, yo, I want to ask you something, man. Do you remember the first rap song that you memorized, like somebody else's rap song that you just loved so much you memorized it? Um, yeah, man. Um, Sugar Hell. <laughs> um, Rapper's Delight? Rapper's Delight. Hold up. Um, Sucker MCs, Run DMC. I, I mean, when that came out, and what was so dope about it, man, is it, you know, hip hop was evolving at the time. We thought that records had to sound a certain way. You know, the, the way Rappers Delight came out, it was good times, mm -hmm. but they didn't use good times. So, you know, the, the direction was going towards, you know, you take this song and you, you do it over and you make it sound a little more, or, or just, you can't sample it, you just gotta play it over and just make it sound pleasant, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Suck MCs came out and it was a beat. Yeah. And it was a beat that was out already. It was um, Heart, uh, Armist Crush. Mm -hmm. And to hear almost like a, well, to hear a sample beat and just the beat, it kinda, you know, put, that edge back on hip hop, like, yo, you, you don't have to, you know, make it sound, you know, pleasant for radio. It can be just as hard as you want, as long as it's music, right. you know what I mean? And right. Suck MCs kind of, you know, kept kept the, the scale, like, you know, we had a choice, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, those are some of the early joints, man. And even King Tim the Third, man, mm. like before that, before Sugar Hill Gang, Mm. King Tim the Third, uh, Fatback Band, and um, you know anything that came out, man, like you know just singing along and and just amazed how hip hop was like taking over the neighborhood at that time. It didn't take over the world yet, but right. it was taking over the neighborhood where every little kid knew the words. You know, if it came on the radio, it kind of stopped what was going on, and everybody kind of you know paid attention to it and participated in it. You know what I mean? So. It, it was dope to just have that vibe and that love for that new music that was coming. Man, 
This man said, sucking MCs two years ago. A friend of mine asked me to say some MC lines. Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That 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 set the stage right there, you know what I mean? Set the stage. Big up, man. run DMC, peace to RIP, JMJ. All day. Up. All day. Amen. That's right. Are there any rappers, past, present, you know what I'm saying? that ever inspired you to push your pen harder? Oh yeah, yeah, many, many, man. Really? Many, many. Like, uh, I think I was, um, you know, to this day, I was always able to stay a fan, you know what I mean? Like, I love music so much, man. If I if hear a good song, it could be from anybody. Um, and, you know, same thing with hip hop. Um, I like to hear different, um, styles too, you know what I mean? So just to just to stay a fan of it, man, to, to you know, listen out for, you know, who's rocking. And it ain't always a uh, certain MC's album. It could be one cut. Yeah. And, you know, you hear certain songs like, ooh, that's 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 dope. Right. And as an artist it, it just inspires you to be dope. And you know what I mean? And and just that, you know, feeling you get when you hear a good song, it's just like, all right. And you want to do the same thing if you, you know, you write a song, you want people to get that same feeling you got when, you know, you heard the song. But it's a bunch of artists out there, you know, not nothing too much in particular. But, right, right. But um, I love good music, man. Because I, I, I always wonder that, like, somebody as masterful as you with the pen, like, who could even, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Inspire yeah. you because, you know, it's like, it's kind of like what, um, Dr. Um, John Henry Clark said when he said, um, mm. you know, he only debate his equals, all others he teach. Mm. You know what I'm right, saying? It right. was like you was teaching uh -huh. the culture. So it was like, who who could it like, Big Daddy, Cool but G? Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely they them They always used to mention them, like, yeah. Big Daddy, Cool G, the only ones that could, could, could even try to go there with Rakim, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Yeah, and, and, you know, imagine, you know, back in the 80s and, you're sitting there in a cool G rap song mm. come out. You know, as as a as an artist, as a fan, you know, you know, you sit there, you like you wanna go home and, and write some rhymes, yeah. you know what I mean? Like immediately. You want, well, like nothing else, you don't wanna eat no more. You don't, you know what I mean? You might have a chick hollering at you like, yo, man, I'm I'm gonna holler at you tomorrow, man. Go home and and and, and that's what it did, man. That's what it do. People like that came. Um, KRS One, you know, Latifah, like, I mean, I'm such a fan of hip hop. Anybody make a dope song, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by it, and I'm, and I'm able to use that energy as inspiration, you know, and, and nothing else. Like, I never hated on, you know, an artist or, you know, wish they didn't do good or wish the song wasn't good. Like, you can't deny. You know, good music, man. Like, even if you don't like it, you can sit there all you want and all of a sudden your foot will start tapping and you try to stop that <laughs> shit and your legs start to, you know what I mean? Like, can't deny it, man. So, it's, it's dope, man. And coming up in that era, it's a lot of, you know, inspiration, man. You know, like Kim Shabazz, uh, you know. Oh, uh, red, I walk in the square. Come on, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm so, in there with Yeah, you, baby. So, it, it, it was like so many good, Good songs, man, and, and artists, man, that was trying to, you know, take it to the next level. It was a it, it was a good feeling that everybody was trying to be original mm. too at that time. So that was another thing, man. Like no matter what we heard or how much it inspired us, we knew that we couldn't do that. We had to be different. So you know, not to go home and take somebody's idea, go home and be, you know. If you want to challenge a record, you can go home and try to be better than the record or just go home and be dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was my thing. I never really um, concentrated on an artist when I was working. It was just trying to be better than myself. Uh, Word. I want to talk some more about Sweat the Technique, man. Mm. It's such an incredible book. Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Like, Thanks. it's It's just incredible. In the book, you said, before you... MCs finish their thought at the end of each line. Right. That's really important jewelry, especially for a writer, because you opened up an entirely new chamber of creation. 
mm. for all rappers. You know, you free them from having to finish their thought. Yes, sir. At the end of a line, you know, what made what sparked that idea? Yo, know, I, I used to, um, I used to get so caught up in writing rhymes. Like I used to stare at the paper a lot, and I would stare in between the lines. And I would feel like I said in the record, when I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the lines. I escape when I finish the rhyme. So I used to always just, you know, I used to zone out and stare at the paper, stare at the lines. And literally, where I'm at with the rhyme, the word that I'm looking for, that's exactly the spot that I'm staring at. And I'm stuck in between the lines. So I used to feel like, let me free myself from what is containing me to write in a regular way. Because when you write rhymes, you always try to, you know, you try to write neat and finish the bar before, you know, you go to the second line. So you try to get one bar on one line, second bar on the second line, you know what I mean? And then I was realizing for as many words as I was trying to cram in one bar, I couldn't fit my words mm -hmm. in one line. So after a while, I just realized, like, I'm going to use two lines for each bar. Mm. Because, like, you know what I mean? What am I trying to do? Am I trying to write a neat, you know what I mean, rhyme? Or am I try to, trying to write a dope rhyme? Right. You know what I mean? So that was my whole concept to, like, not let the paper contain me and make me write in the cookie cutter style. Um, as I started getting a little deeper into my style, I started, um, like I would listen to John Coltrane and John, some songs John Coltrane would come on and start blowing and you won't hear the same melody twice through the whole song, mm. you know what I mean? So, you know, you sit there and I played the sax, so I'm listening and I'm also dissecting being that I'm an MC, letting this be a teacher or a different God. So, you know, my early records, I never repeated the same cadence in a whole song. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I would make sure I wouldn't say that same cadence twice, man. So, like, that was my thing. And it was funny because hip hop started changing slowly where a lot of people started using the same cadence through the whole song or a whole verse. Right. And it sounded dope, you know what I mean? It sounded, especially when they rolled, you know, the, the track a certain way and the track uh, or the style just fit the track, you know, it's, it's dope like that. But um, I would never want to repeat the same um, cadence, man. And that's because of John Coltrane. And um, yeah, man, just trying to think outside the box. I, I love so much different music but I knew how to make, you know, no matter what it was, inspire me, you know what I mean? Um, like for instance, um, John Coltrane, my, my, my guy, he played two notes on the sax at the same time, mm. which is in, impossible. I played the sax, I'm, I'm, I wasn't the greatest, you know what I mean? But there's nobody else that ever played two notes at one time. When you're playing notes, as you move your fingers, that's the only way you can change a note to play too, you know what I mean? So that means he, you know what I mean? Fixed his mouth to, to make, which is incredible. So when you hear artists that you love do things like that, you say to yourself, well, what could I do as an MC like John Coltrane did with the saxophone? You know what I mean? Like what, what am I doing that's far different than what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. So I would use things like that to push me, push myself to make sure that, you know what I mean, and I don't want to sound, but make sure that I was far ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and just try to do something that, that made me stand out or, or just was like, yo how, yo, how did he do that, man? Or, 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 or if you rewind it, you know, that's an MC's dream. If you listen to my song and you have to rewind it to hear what I said, that's what we're trying to do, man. But, you know, that's, that's, what it, that's what it was. It's drawing different inspiration from different people, different music, and trying to 
to try to figure out how I can, you know, make me a better artist or a better writer from listening to that or seeing that or whatever the case is. Yeah, you changed the game with that. I mean, so many MCs started thinking with that mindset after yeah. they heard you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you say you played the sax. You ever play any sax on any of the, on the music that you was making? Nah, man. I, I always wanted to. Um, I think about it a lot. Um, my brother, my oldest brother just got me a saxophone, so I'm looking forward to, you know, trying some things, man. Mm. But um, I did play drums on one of, one of the songs. I played drums on um, Juice, you know, The Ledge. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was it was it was ill situation. They they called me up and asked me um, if I want to see the movie and write a song for the movie, not title track, but just see the movie and do a song. So I was like, yeah, don't I'll come down. So they had a little spot, maybe 10, 15 people in there, watch the movie. And then when it was over, they came and asked me, will I do the title track for the movie? Mm. So I was like, okay. Went back to the crib, long story short, I was, you know, doing uh, record shopping all the time. And I would put records that I liked to the side so I could come back, sample it up later. So I came back home, went to that stack. I produced the track and, you know, did my thing. So I came home. I grabbed the stack, I grabbed the record, and no exaggeration, the first record, and maybe because I knew that that was one of the best records that I just bought, I pulled the record out, put it on. Doom, 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 doom. No more searching. I stopped the record, cut the sample on, you know what I mean? Sampled the bass line. Now, I was looking for a particular style of drums and couldn't find it, so I just found a little drum sample that I could put on it to start writing. But once I got to the studio, I still needed that drum I was looking for and still couldn't find it. I figured between now and writing a song, I would come up. But I was so you know, caught up with writing a song, I never looked through my records to find a beat. So I got in the studio, had a stack of records that still didn't have the right drums on it. So I looked in the, in the back, the drums is in there. I told my <laughs> man, yo, mic that shit up for me, man. He was like, I said, yeah, mic that shit up. I went in there and played the drums on Juice. So, y'all ever hear Juice and you hear the drums rocking? That's your boy. That's you know your I mean? boy. That's your boy. You man. played the drums on Juice. You oh, scratched right. on Musical Massacre. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, how much of your catalog would you say you produced or co-produced? Like, mm, good question. Um, I think eighty percent. Eighty catalog. Wow. I produced. Eighty percent. Yeah. Wow. I asked Eminem this question. Do you feel like your name is mentioned enough in the producer's conversation? You just said 80%. No, that's, that's, and that's my fault because uh, nobody knew. Um, coming up, you know, it looked, it looked dope for the group that people thought Eric B was doing the beats and I was doing the rhymes. It looked, it looked good as a group, so I never said nothing, you know what I mean? Um, as a young rapper, like I was rapping for so long, I knew what I liked rhyming to. So I, I came to the studio with records and ideas, you know what I mean? Um, paid in full, I used to always rhyme off of Dennis Edwards um, back in the day, don't look no further. Um, you know, of course, James Brown, everything from Funky President to um, Funky Drummer, you know what I mean? Like, that was MCs, mm -hmm. like, that's, somebody throw that, you could be over there playing ball, sweaty, just rocking. DJ over there, you know, way over on the handball court, throw Funky Drummer on, you start looking around, yo, yo, take my place, huh? <laughs> Run over to the court, I mean, let me let me get five minutes on him. That's like an MC's dream, man, so. You no know, certain joints that I that I love, man. So I, I bought those songs to the studio first. Um, in the beginning, I couldn't sample. Um, my engineer Patrick Adams, big up Pat. What's going on, Pat? You all right? <laughs> uh, my, my engineer Patrick Adams, man. I was blessed because he knew how to do everything. So I would go to the studio first with the beat. It would sample the beat up. Um, you know, 
sample, you know, eight bars of the beat or four bars of the beat, whatever it was. Then put this bass line on it. Then I pull another record out. Put these horns on it. Pull another. Put this guitar lick on it. So he used to look at me. He used to be like, "You know, all this shit is different in different keys, right?" <laughs> I used to be like, "Yeah, man. That's what. That's your job, man. Just fix that shit up, bro." Fat, my man Pat used to fix his shit. And like back in the day, um, a lot of early hip hop. If you listen, the samples was out of key. Mm. But our samples was for the most part on key because of my man Patrick Adams. He knew how to, you know, tone the samples and, and key them, pitch them right so that they blended in, man. But I was pulling records and riffs and different shit from different records, man. And my man was, um, you know, making it work, man. But um, having mad love for different songs, man, I would bring a stack of joints. Um, Eric B uh, did a couple joints, but for the most part it was, you know, stuff that I love rhyming to. That's incredible. I, I had no clue. You, damn, 80%, man, that, that's, that's incredible. That's a lot of incredible music. Yes, sir. Um, shit. And then later on, Paul C, um, he started showing me the SB1200, the brother that's on the back of one of my album covers. He made In the Ghetto uh, a bunch of songs for me. Um, and after that, I started to learn how to sample, man. But um, yeah, in the beginning, I was just bringing records, you know, chop this for me like this. Um, then later on, I started um, getting nice with the samplers and stuff like that. But um, did a lot of joints, a lot of joints. Yeah. I don't know. Man, so speaking of producers and production, Dr. Dre, everybody want to know, how was your time on Aftermath, man? What was that like? It was it was ill, man. Um, I learned a lot sitting with Dre and and being around, you know, for that little bit of time that I was around. Um, and and being in Cali too, man. I lived in Cali for three years. I never knew that. Yeah, you know, God, I mean, I was uh, right here, right here, baby. Saying? Three years, <laughs> what up, man? Um, Dre, you know, still one of the best, you know, producers ever. I was I was about to do a deal with DreamWorks, and one of the people at DreamWorks called Dre up. It's like, yo, I'm thinking about signing Rakim. If I do, would you do some beats for him? Long story short, Dre called us up. Was like, yo, if you're about to sign, just sign with me direct. You know what I mean? Which was cool. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. So me and Dre spoke. Um, and we had we had an idea of what we wanted to do, man. You know what I mean? And, and of course, you know he knew that it was big expectations on it. I knew it was going to be big expectations on it. I knew that Dre would bring the best out of me. Dre knew that he had to make some spectacular shit. Um, I think I think what. What we didn't realize, man, is we were so different. You know what I mean? Um, even our process, mm. Dre already had his formula. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, it worked with everything he did. I was kind of growing from what I've been through mm -hmm. and trying to leave a lot of um, stereotypical things that people assume um, about me or what I was doing, try to leave that behind. You know what I mean? Um, you know, everybody thought I was selling uh, cocaine. You know, <laughs> maybe, at one point, they, somebody told me I got caught with a key suit on. I'm like, yeah, a uh -huh. key suit. Yeah, what? Well, you know, it, it, it was. Uh, How did those rumors come about? Uh, I guess people speculate. Um, you know. They, they they see you in the hood and you dress a certain way and look in a certain way. They think, yeah, Ross selling drugs. You know, he he out in our hood. What are you doing in our hood? I had people all over New York and, you know, people that showed me love. I go on the projects and share with, with somebody I know and whatever they was doing, you know, that's what they doing. Right, you know right. what I mean? They was doing, most likely doing what they was doing before I met them. But you know, people see one and two together, and you you you're guilty by association. 
You know, I never sold drugs. Some, you know, it used to bug me out because people can talk about something to the point. I found myself, you know, sticking up for myself, like, you know, getting upset. Yo, you sell drugs and, you know, almost wanting to, you know, get physical to prove that, you know, I'm not a drug dealer and I had to catch myself, you know what I mean? But um, it definitely affected me for a while, you know, anybody thinking I'm a drug dealer, I don't, I don't get down like that. I was trying to leave the, you know, the negativity, you know, behind, man, and, and just make good music. And, um, you know, Dre, of course, that's Dre's, uh, that's his ingredient, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, you know, of course, he wanted me to talk about you know, what I've been through, and, you know, I, I was kind of over that. So, you know, that was our misunderstanding, so we couldn't really get on the same page, man. But I think if we could have balanced it out, you know what I mean, I think we could have made an a, a incredible album, man, because, you know, again, man, Dre, you know, I, I don't know if he missed ever. I know. You know I what mean, I mean? You, I don't know if he ever you missed. Know what I'm saying? So. You and Dre together is like, that's hip hop's dream, you know what I'm saying? Hold up, like, man. I would. I, I think we both was feeling that energy, man, because you know it, it was it was a good vibe on, you know, the project as far as far as um, you know people anticipating it, man. It was real good vibe, and I think we knew, you know, what 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 it could have been, man. But again, um, you know, he was dealing with some things, you know, in his camp, and you know, probably in his world at the time, and. Um, you know, the stars just, just didn't align, man. But, you know, I think that would have been a crazy, crazy uh, album. Yeah. Right Judging from The Watcher uh, too. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Jay-Z and Drake? Yes, sir. You know what man. I mean? And, and like I told, I remember when I first started working with him, he gave gave me a couple of his producers to work with until he, you know, moved some things out the way and, you know, got, got ready to get in the studio with me. And I remember from the rip telling them, like, I, I, I got no problem working with them. I said, but, you know, it's, it's like you don't really know how to tell a person, like, I'm saving my shit for you, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I hear Dre beat, I'm, so this is gonna, I'm, I'm almost gonna have to write this with, like, the left side of my brain and, and my left hand, so I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, so, you know, I knew that I had to step my game up. And you know, I was looking forward to the challenge, man. But yeah, man. I, I mean, is there any um, Dr. Dre, Rakim music in the vault that we might hear one day? Um, it was a couple joints. It was a couple joints. I think a couple got leaked out. You know, again, man. I I, I just wish you know the stars would have lined up. Right. And you know, it could have been Dre and Ra. <laughs> You know what I mean? And Yo, Dre, man, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what up? What up, baby? What up, baby? Come on, man. You know what I'm Let's get back at it, man. You feel you me? You know what I mean? <laughs> Word. I don't want to hang my mic up and, and look back like it's some things I should have did and could have did and never did, man. And that's one of them, baby. Pa. I always wonder how that would have turned out, man. But blessings, man. Hope blessings everything Dre, good. Man. Well, blessings to Dre. Um, that's right. Some of the production on the Seven Seal album kind of gave me a little aftermath feel on some of the beats, man. Do you mm. did you uh you agree with that or disagree? Um, I was hearing a little brum brum. Like oh yeah, yeah, it couple. is it, it is a joint. It got that piano on there. Yeah, Wrote up. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, that was actually a, a track this brother from from Jersey did for me. Mm. But um, yeah, just you know, it it sounded it sounded good. And um, I think I think that was that part of me that wanted to rhyme on right. some of that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? So, yeah. But yeah, man. Came out definitely. hard, too. Well, good Came look. Came out good hard. Um, excluding yourself, if you had to take yourself out the equation, is there someone who you may consider to be the greatest rapper of all time? Um, yeah, it's, it's a couple people. It's a couple people. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta start in the beginning, because without, without that, like I wouldn't be, you know, who I am. And that's Melly Mel, uh, Kumo D, and Kaz. Them brothers had the skills to be like, you know what I mean? I think if the time would have presented it, 
you know, if they was around at the right time, it would have been a lot, a lot different. You know what I mean? As far as the impact. Um, unfortunately, everybody think that that's old school. Yeah. But um, and then you got, you know, one of my favorite MCs is Eminem. Um, Jay Z, another one of my favorite MCs. Um. There's a few cats, man, um, that I think could have, you know, depending on what time they was out, could have been, you know, yeah. you know, number one or whatever you want to call it, man. But um, I think that brother right there, you know, another another brother that I love, man, I think one of, is one of the most underrated MCs is Black Thought. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when you look at this brother's talent, and you know, I knew he can spit, but after, you know, as he's doing the, the night show, I remember sitting there one day chilling. The joint came on and Black started singing Frank Sinatra. Mm. I'm sitting there and he killing this shit, man. I'm sitting there like, you know what I mean? That right there, you know, that 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 gives me a, you know, I got the utmost respect for this brother, because that's talent. That's talent. You know I mean, that's talent. He fire on the mic, and this brother not only can sing, he's singing Frank Sinatra, like Frank, and killing that shit. Mm. You know, and you know, people think MCs is, you know, we 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 limited. You know, we, you know, we not supposed to be able to do that. Right. You know what I mean? And that brother, you know what I mean? So it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's you know, when you look at a, a brother's overall talent. You know what I mean? To me, that factors in, man. And, you know, I got the utmost respect for that brother. But, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's a few on my list right there. Yeah, man. Shout uh, out Black Thought, man. That's yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? That's a, he's a killer on that mic. That's right, man. Hold up. He's definitely a killer on the microphone. Yeah, I, I seen Black Thought do, uh, perform a Cool G. He performed a cool G song, man. Yeah. He was hitting every line crazy. Mm, yeah, yeah. Just like and that's like, another wow. thing. He knows everybody's songs, bro. Yeah. It's like you ever see when they give somebody a tribute, mm -hmm. notice black thoughts always up there. That's cause they be scrambling around like who knows such and such. Who knows? I know that. <laughs> that's black thoughts sitting there. Yeah, I know that. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. He knows everybody's song. Um, my DJ. Um, now Eric B, my, my DJ I use when I'm doing my solo um, project. His name is uh, DJ Technician. But um, he told me, he asked him one day, he was like, yo, just to like, almost like a chin check. He was like, yo, what did um, such and such say on, on such and such? And he was like, yo, wow, right, man, nobody ever knew, but thought knew it, you know what I mean? And it was uh, Milk and Giz. Mm. And... It's a part where Gizmo say, um, something was, su oh, suckers, that's, I thought, everybody thought he said, suckers, that's down with me. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. He said, suckers, that's down with these or something else. But Thought knew exactly what it said. But it's, it's little, like, parts of, you know, songs like that where we never know what they're saying and we just say a word and everybody got a different word for that part. Right. Thought knows the word. He knows the no, word. Thought knows the word. <laughs> so if you know what I mean, you ever got any MC trivia, Black Thought's a man for that, man. Hey, genius. But, I know y'all be, you know what I'm saying, breaking down in everybody's lyrics, you know, man, had to get Black Thought in there, you know what I mean? To, well, to make sure y'all get right, it right. That's right, check with Thought. <laughs> thought, Thought's a man. He, he, he dope with that, man. Incredible That's brother, man. Peace and love, bro. Peace and love. Um, well, what's, what's your thoughts on this streaming era? Um, another um, platform, man. Um, you know, it's, it's changing so rapidly, man. The way we, you know, sell our music and the way we get our, um, the way we get our music out there, man. It's definitely lucrative. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know, it's. It's one way that the artists can take advantage of the internet. Um, when the internet first came out, it seemed like it was taking advantage of us. We couldn't keep up with, you know, nothing. You know, they was bootlegging us and all kind of, you know. But 
You know, that's one way that the artist can get back control of, you know, the, the situation of how his music is being promoted, sold, and things like that. And he can also keep up with, you know, what it's doing in, in sales and things like that. So it's, it's good for yeah. the artists, I think. It's, it's way different, man. I mean, it you is, know, man. standing out, people was wrapped around the Sam Goody and the warehouse yeah, and yeah. Tower Records for your records, you know what I'm well, saying? Well. And that was one person at a time buying a physical copy. Well, 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 you know, now we got people streaming, streaming and maybe yeah. machine streaming, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Well, well. Uh, but um, you said bootleg, man. You took me back to another part of your book where you said um, y'all used to lay in the cut for the bootleggers. Oh, yeah. We should be... I got arrested a couple times dealing with bootleggers, man. But yeah, we used to, we used to, no disrespect to you brothers out there that was bootlegging and know what I'm talking about. But yeah, we used to whip y'all ass, man. And it, it was so funny, man, because, you know, we would pull up and at this time, you know, we selling our own t-shirts and hats and posters and shit inside. Right. So you pull up, you see a bunch of cats out there with t-shirts and you're like, that ain't my shit. You start seeing one, then you see one cat with a stack of them, you know what I mean? You're like, okay, we'll catch this motherfucker after the show. And sure enough, we go take care of our business, do the show. And the thing was, is yeah, let him, let him, let him stack up. Let him collect all that choppy. And as soon as we finish, we're gonna go out there, take the rest of the shirts and the choppy. You know what I mean? <laughs> and sure enough, man, we get out there, you know, sneak up on them, you know. Sometimes we had to, you know, you use a little force. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, I got arrested a couple times. I got arrested in Philly. It was funny as hell. But um what was dope about what was dope about that is we did two shows in Philly. So after the first show, got arrested for uh, fighting the bootlegs in the parking lot. So I'm locked up next day, you know, everybody's trying to get me out. And I'm watching the clock. Showtime's about 7.30, you know what I mean? 8 o'clock. So it's about 5 o'clock. I'm still sitting there. I'm like, yeah, it don't look like I'm going to make this one. 6 o'clock. And I mean, everybody, you know, that we had, that was somebody was calling up trying to get me out. And then finally, um, Joe Frazier called up mm. and got me out, bro. Um, I used to go up to his house, um, with one of his nephews mm -hmm. and go chill all the time. Um, That's legendary. Joe Frazier come get you out of world jail? World is born, man. I mean, I mean, everybody was trying to. Joe called up, bing, bing. Man came and told me, um, you know Joe Frazier? And I was like, yeah, well, you lucky you know Joe Frazier because he <laughs> called and got you out of here, man. So big up to the, to the Frazier family. Peace and blessings, man. World up. Appreciate right. y'all, man, from the heart. But what was so dope, man, he called in the nick of time. And I went from jail straight to the stage. Wound up, drove me from jail. Cops took me out, took me to the arena, drove me up under the joint. I got out the cop car, no shoestrings. As you know, when you go to jail, you got to take your shoestrings off. Mm -hmm. And when I went back, the shoestrings that was on the rack was fucked up. So I left them shits there, man. Somebody took my shit, left me they shit. So. Got out the joint, no shoestrings, same shit I had on from the day before. Got on stage and like, you know, the whole, the whole city knew what happened, knew I was locked up and thought that I wasn't coming, man. So when I got out there and stepped on stage, man, I, you, know, you know, the crowd went crazy. I thought I was Billy Jack or something, you know what I mean? But dope feeling, man, dope situation. And uh, just blessed to be able to, you know what I mean? Go through shit, you know, didn't get into too much trouble and able to, you know, still do my thing, man. And people show that love. So it was a crazy experience, man. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Went from Learned bars to bars. Yo, man. Eric B and Rockem biopic. Mm. We ever gonna get that? Um, yeah, we actually uh got some people uh speaking to us about it now. We got a couple things uh, on the table, um, and also a, um, a Rock Kim biopic as well. So just um, trying to, you know, 
find the right people that's interested and make sure that we do it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the yeah. main thing. But um, do it but justice. I think, yeah, we want to make sure that um, because um, you know, to tell the story right, man. You know what I mean? We we uh, you know, we would need a cable outlet or you know what I mean? Uh, right. No filter. But um, we want to make sure that we can kind of, you know, put the information out there without people getting the wrong uh, idea of, you know, you know how we was living and you know how we was doing our music or whatever the case is, man. You know, me and Eric um, came up around, you know, around some rough shit. Right. You know what I mean? And um, you know, we we uh. Fortunately, you know, we still here and, you know, but, um, yeah, you know, was hanging out with some, with some, uh, with some real motherfuckers, man. And, uh, you know, without telling that story, but making sure the story get told, we want to make sure we do it right. Uh, right, right. Yeah. I mean, cause back then in the beginning of that film, I was, I would think, um, you know, we got Instagram, social media, Facebook now. Yeah. You got all the artists. They, you basically see into the into their lives. Right. You know, twenty four seven. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. I mean, when we was young, with your posters on the wall, we didn't know what you was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm Hold saying? Up. Hold Behind up. the scenes, and I think that kind of a film would just give us a look. No into, doubt. No you doubt. You know that story, man. So we could come full circle, three sixty. That's like, right. Oh, that's what was going on. You that's know, I right. Think a lot man. of people in hip hop would be very interested in peeping that out. Yeah, no doubt. And then the you know soundtrack. I mean? Like if you <laughs> if you look on the on the first album cover, um, there was a brother on there named Fifty Cent, the the, the original Fifty Cent. That's where Fifty Cent got his rap name from. And um, you know, brother brother was from the streets. Um, and there's a couple brothers on there. That's um, street legends, mm. you know what I mean, and um, and that's what I mean, and, and and that's what I'm trying to explain. Like you know, those brothers, they live their lives, and we don't want to um, tell a story, or you know what I mean, but we want to make sure that people understand like what we've been through, and kind of because that helped make us who we who we was and right. who we are. You know what I mean? Right. And right. So we want to make sure we pay homage without, you know what I mean? Crossing that line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, no, you know, with, 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 with the utmost respect yeah. and, and yeah. make sure that we do the story justice. Word up. Absolutely. Let's switch, let's switch gears a little bit. On your album, The Master, yes, sir. you spoke on the state of hip hop on an interlude. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was 1999. How do you feel about the state of hip hop in 2020? What's promising now, man, is that you know, hip hop is real lucrative, and you know you gotta respect it as a genre now. Um, it's made its mark in music where you know it's influenced rock and roll, it's influenced country. You know what I mean? And you know it's even influenced jazz. Um, jazz artists is doing um, remakes of hip hop albums. Um, I got a, I got somebody that did one of my albums over, Follow the Leader. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's definitely, you know, here to stay. It's influenced not only the consumers and listeners, but it's it's influenced music uh, itself. You know what I mean? So you know, it's, it's you know, I'm proud of it that it's came, you know, came this far, man. You know, back in the '80s, people. You know, used to say it was a fad and it wasn't gonna last, and you know it was, you know what I mean. But you know, today, you know, you can't do nothing without uh, hip hop music, or uh, really? movies, or uh, you know, you look at commercials. Um, no matter what it is, they influence some way from hip hop. I mean, right now when I listen, because, like I said, you master the supreme art of lyricism, um, so you know. When you were thinking outside the box and being so ahead of of your competition, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was so evident, you know what I mean? Because people were really saying simple stuff 
And we was loving it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. We was loving it. But then when you was like, you know, my strategy has to be tragedy, catastrophe. Then right. it was like, hold up. You know what I mean? <laughs> that up. took a whole nother. <laughs> you brought like a galaxy into this bitch. You know what I'm right. saying? So my whole thing is now I hear people and I'm like, how can they be that far ahead of what's going on now? What do they have to do? I think a lot of them start speed rapping. You hear the people yeah, like that's yeah. rapping real, real, real fast on every joint. Right. You know, I mean, I've done it sometime too, but I mean, you know, I don't think that's the next level. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like, right. what, it, can there be a next level? Like, Well, that's, that's, that's a dope question, man. And I think that's the first time somebody asked me that. And really, that's what it is. And, you know, that's one of the things I used to always try to do. I used to try to listen to see where the game was at the time and just try to, you know, one up it, you mm -hmm. know, if you want to say, you know what I mean? Um, that, was, that was my way of keeping up and also, you know, pushing the envelope, you know what I mean? Um, and I think right now, that's what has to be done. You know, whoever wants to, you know, take rap to the next level, they got to really see what it is right now. See, see what's, the, you know, the most important elements and, and what's making hip hop what it is right now. And um, blow that shit out the water. Mm. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's, it's just going to take somebody that knows how to just, you know, it, it, it's almost like, um, you know, you know, you watch somebody run a race and you say, all right, they ran a 40 and 4-2. Now you know what you gotta be. Right. So if they can look at hip hop and say, all right, this is what it is and I think this is the most talent that's being, you know, and then take that shit to the next level. What's, what's sometimes it's what's not being done at the time, more important than that. It's just like doing a little more and what's being done right now. So whoever can figure that out will be the one to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Y'all got some homework to do. You working on any new music? Yes, sir. Yes, uh -oh. sir. And that's why I laugh. Now we talking. Because I'm going through that right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to, you know, see where the game is at, man, and just make sure that, you know, I'm ahead of myself and I don't want to, you know, put it out there. But yeah, man, my, my job is to see what's going on, glorify it personify it, mm. you know what I mean? And take it to the next level. So no no, no disrespect, but yeah, I wanna make sure that I do something different than what y'all doing and take it to the next level. And you supposed to come back and do the same thing, do something different than what we doing and take it over our head. And that's what keep hip hop elevated. Wow. wow. Yeah, man, we ready for that music. I hope, yeah, man, you know I hope, I hope, I hope, uh, it get embraced, man, and, and you know, I hope y'all enjoy it, man. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm bumping that. I mean, uh -huh. that's part of every great story. The hero disappeared and he come back. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, that's, sir. that's what it yes, is. Um, no doubt. You got any advice for like young rappers? Um, yeah, man. Um, I think the best advice I can give young younger uh, rappers, man, is to speak from your heart, man. Um, don't let nobody tell you how you should be rapping, or you'll be rapping just like anybody else. You know what I mean? You'd be a cookie cutter rapper, you don't want that. I think speaking for, from your heart allows you to take advantage of your individuality, man. And that's what separates you from me. Um, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do what you do, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't think like you think. I can't imagine like you imagine. I don't see like you see, and that's my advantage. You can't think like I think, you know what I mean? You, 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 you don't, you know what I mean? And, and that's what we all have to realize. We have something special that we have and to learn how to express that is what you, you know, have to learn how to do. It's not about you sounding like the next person or, you know, this is the this is the wave right now. No, that's that's not the wave. That's that's the wave he created. You know what I mean? Create your own wave, and and let your pen. You know what I mean? Um, write what 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 your inner self is telling it, and that's the only way you'll be able to be original and nobody will sound like you 
Nobody gonna think like you. And most of all, is your art or your work is gonna stand out. And you know, that's 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 what we want, man. We wanna be over there somewhere. You know what I mean? So that's one of the It's jewelry time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yo know saying, hey man. Look, man, this interview was based on 25 questions. You know what I'm saying? Two plus five is seven. Seven, baby. You know what I mean? G is the seventh letter made. Seventh letter made, baby. You know what baby. I'm saying? Thank you, legend. No doubt. I appreciate you, Thanks man. Thanks for welcome, Matt, man. Welcome Thank you, man. Peace and it love. It was an honor. All you know right. what I'm saying? To have a God MC in the building. I need y'all to press that subscribe button so you can see more content and so you can follow the leader. Yes, sir. Peace Crooks and Corner, love. we out. Crooks Corner, 2020.